Hey guys, it's Redefine Horizons. This is Landon. So this is another video in the set of videos we're doing. Uh, we're just showing you guys uh, how to code up a triple store, uh, which is a special kind of database, uh, triple store in C-sharp. It's a programming language from Microsoft. And in the last video, we kind of crudely laid out a uh, user interface um, in what they call XAML, uh, X-A-M-L, um, for, our, for our, just kind of our simple, uh, user interface. So I wanted to clean a bunch of that up. So I cleaned up a bunch of that layout. I had to figure out how the, how the uh, grid layout in WPF worked and, and got that done and, and made some other changes. So I'm fairly happy with the results. It's not perfect, but it's okay. So let me show you guys that. So I'll just hit run here on the project and it takes it a minute um, and it'll run. Okay, so here's the window. Um, so we've got where you can type in the primary value. Okay, so let's say building 155-62 relator value has number a level secondary value one primary value data type is going to be building relator va uh, relator data type is um, yeah I don't know about this so we're going to put unknown for now unknown. And then you can come down here and the number of levels, the secondary value data type is whole number. Then we've got a button to add the entry and then we've got a list of all the entry keys. Okay, the entry identifiers will show up here after they're added. Now, this is a dumb, dumb graphical interface. Okay, so right now it doesn't do anything. So we wanna wire it up so that it actually does something when we hit the add entry button. Okay, <laughs> which it might be harder than we actually think. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I just want to te test the add entry button. So I want to I want to get the add entry button to display uh, one, some of these values here after I've entered them in. I just want to know that the add entry the code in the in the event what they call the event handler for the add entry button can can actually get to these values. Okay, then we'll once we get it to do that we'll we'll set the add entry button up to actually create an entry object and add it to our database. Then we gotta figure out how to link this list view over here to the to the triple store object, the actual database. Um, and I don't know how to do that yet. We'll have to figure it out. So we, we might bang our head on it, but. Okay, so let's just see if we can get this button, the add entry button here to access some of these data values. So to do that, um, so uh, right here in the properties panel, if you have the wrench highlighted, it gives you all the properties, but over here, this lightning bolt is the events. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to find the like click on the button event and then we want to just display a quick dialog box with one of these values. Okay, so we're going to come over here. Here's the click event. Okay, now when I double click the, the click event, it's going to bring me into this uh, file here called mainwindow.xaml.cs for C sharp. And this is where I can add um, when, when, I want the, with, when I want this button to do stuff, it'll, it'll do stuff here. Okay. So uh, we're gonna see if we can get a hold of a data value now and show it. Now, let me show you guys one other thing. So in uh, my XAML file for my user interface, for each text box and for this list box, I went ahead and added a name. So I put in this X name and then I gave it a variable name, okay, which should allow me to get to uh, the, the value in my code. Okay, so we're gonna see if we can just show the primary value here, okay, in our in our little event handler. Okay, so uh, we want to see. We're gonna make a string, and for now we're just gonna call it test value. Okay, and we're gonna say that string is equals to. Now we want to refer to the variable name here for the primary value. So this is it. This is the variable name I created. My primary value text box. Okay. And so we're going to say we want to get that text value, text right here. Okay, so now we've stored that value in the string here, and now we want to show it. And so to do that, I just Googled how to show a message box. Um, how to show a message box. And so we want to just create a message box. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, 
so let's see if we can do this here. So we're going to say string caption okay, equals this works. Okay, so we'll make a little caption there for our message box. And then we're going to say, um, uh, let's see here. I think I can just do it with show window string. Show window string string. Let's try that. So let's just say, so we're going to come down here and we're going to say, um, so we want to make the message box. So let's try this. Let's try message box. Uh, show. And the text value is going to be text value. Okay, and then we're going to have the caption is going to be caption. And then we're going to have an OK button on there. Okay, with the information button. All right. Okay, so in order for this to work, we're going to save that now. We've got to put a value in the primary value text box field and then click the button and it should show us a message box with the with the caption this works with the actual value that we put in the field so let's give this thing a whir oh it's okay I've got build errors so that's not good so let's see if we can figure out where our build errors are at main window does not contain a definition so let's just open this up um, okay so we're gonna just delete this that was something I was fooling around with before sorry guys all right let's try it again all right, guys, so here's our window. Now, what we want to do is type a value in here. Land, so I'm just going to put my name, Landon Blake. Now, when we click this button, if our code works, we should get a message box that has this. So let's see. OK, so this works, Landon Blake. All right, so our code can get to what we want. OK, so uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked, guys. I'm, I'm pretty happy about this. OK, so now what we want to do is we want to go in and add, we want to edit this uh, code here for this button and we want to um, we want to um, set it to create an actual um, an actual entry entry object okay so to do that we're gonna start here and we're gonna make a new triple store entry okay so we're gonna call it uh, I'm gonna just call it current entry equals new triple store entry okay now for some reason it can't see this class it says the type couldn't be found so hmm okay this is because I don't have the right namespace right here okay so we talked about that in one of the other videos we got to get the right namespace on there so let's just go ahead and copy this over so that our window can be in the same namespace Okay, and now it should be able to see my well, did I put that in the wrong spot? No. Nope. So now it can see this, but it can't, but this is coming up with an error. So let me undo that. I don't know what happened. Undo. Maybe we need to refactor this. We need to, let's see, rename. And then let's try. Redefine Horizons Triple Store. Okay, so I'm actually. So what I wanted to do was have a dot in here. Okay, so as soon as I do that, it's getting rid of the, um, hmm. So if 
for some reason it's not letting me do that. Wonder if it'll let me use dashes. Oh, it doesn't want to let me use dashes either. That's weird. All right, so we got something funky going on there. Um, okay, so actually, and I actually don't want this in the same namespace. So we're, we're, we've got a new namespace here. I gotta figure out why it won't let me. Uh, why it won't let me rename that namespace? Okay, so what we have to do here is we have to add a using declaration to to pull in the the namespace for for core. Okay, so we're gonna say using redefine horizons dot triple store dot core. Okay, now it'll be able to see our entry class here, okay, which is what we wanted. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna get the values from all of our text boxes. Okay, so we're gonna say string. Okay, and then we're gonna say my primary value. Okay, and then we're gonna say string my relator value. And that should be my relator value text box dot text is how we get that value. Okay. String. Okay, and we're just going to do this for each of the values we need. String my secondary value plus my secondary value dot text. Now that should have had my secondary value text box behind it. Okay, so all we're doing here with this code, guys, is we're getting the values. Uh, we're getting the values out of the text. Okay, my prime out of the out of the user interface to make to create our entry. My primary primary value data type equals my primary value data type dot text. String my uh, relator value data type equals my relator value data type. Oop. Dot text box. Sorry. This should be text box. And what this is telling me is I might not have these name right in my XAML file or it would be able to see them. So we'll look at that in a second. My secondary value data type equals my secondary value data type text box dot text. Oh, you know what? This is a list box. This one's going to be a little bit different. Let's go fix these two in our XAML. Okay, so my relator data type text box. So that's spelled wrong. That says realtor. Okay, so relator. All right, and then my primary value data type. That's misspelled too. That's why those didn't work. Okay, so if we save those changes and go back now, uh, those should go. Nope, there's still a problem with relator. Name of relator, my relator data type text box looks good to me. So let's try this again. Oh, my relator data type text box. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then uh, okay, so this is actually a list. So we want to get a value from a list box, and we want to get the selected value from a list box, which I do not know how to do. So my secondary value data type list view is the name of the variable. Okay, so, but I don't know if text is gonna do it. Yeah. Okay, so we gotta figure out how to get a value from a list box. So we're just gonna Google C sharp WPF get list get list view value. Okay, getting a value from a list view control in Stack Overflow. Um, 
let's see, list view doesn't have a property selected index, you should use selected items. Okay, so we should be able to get the first item out of selected items. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to say here, we want to get the selected items collection. Okay, so this will get us the very first selected item. And then I think we want the two string. We want to make it a string. Okay. All right, so I think that'll work. Okay, so we've got all our values here. Okay, so we can just say get the uh, text values from the user interface. We need to create the new entry being added to the triple store. All right, so now what we want to do, I'm just going to comment this out because it's kind of handy little code I might use here again. Okay, so now we want to create our entry. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we're going to create a um, so now we've got that entry. We want to start setting the um, the values here. So we're going to say my primary value equals my primary value current entry dot my. Okay, and actually there's a shortcut here, so I can get rid of these intermediate variables here. We don't need them. We can we can just do this. Boom. How do you like that? Okay, so we'll make our code a little more concise here. So we'll say um, current entry dot uh, realtor value current entry dot uh, secondary value. Current entry dot uh, primary value data type. Current entry dot realtor value or realtor data type, and then relator. Sorry, current entry dot secondary value data type. Okay, now it's it's not going to like this because we're giving it a string. And it, it wants an enum value. Okay, so I need to figure out how to get. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to actually change this with an if statement. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. You ready? We're going to say um, so we're still going to get this. We're still going to get this string. Okay, so we are going to need an intermediate variable here. So we're going to say string. Um, data type okay and then we'll get the value from the list view and turn it in and, and convert it to a string okay then we want a series of if statements so we want to say if data type is equal to um, I gotta remember what, what we said here text okay. then we want to set current entry my secondary data value, my secondary value data type to, or sorry, equals uh, string. Okay, so now we're, we're trading the string here, right here, we're trading this string for the actual value from the enum. Okay, but we got to do that for each of these values. Okay, so then we said whole number. Okay. Now we're going to end up with a problem here. Um, if somebody puts in a, well, they can't because we got a list box, so we should be okay. So this is going to be uh, dot, uh, let's see. Boolean decimal string 
integer. Okay, so we got to code one of these for each of the data types. Okay, so then we're going to have, um, like we said, number with decimal, and that's going to be a decimal. And then we've got, then we said uh, we got uh, true or false. Boolean, okay, and then we have location, oh, we have date, so we're going to work with date values too, okay, and then we've got one left for location, okay, and there may be a better way to, to maybe there's a method on an enum that lets you get, get the value based on a string, I don't know, I'll have to check that out. Oh, we do have, we got one more. We got primary. Okay. Now, I feel like our code still needs some error checking here, but I'm just, I'm just not sure about it yet. Okay, so now we've got this entry, okay? But what we need to do is, is we need to add the entry to the triple store. Okay, but the problem with that is, um, is we need to uh, create our triple store somewhere, okay? So I'd really like to do that in a separate class. Okay, but I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. So we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add some code here. So we're gonna say custom setup for our application. We're gonna we're gonna create an actual triple store variable here in our window class. Now, what I want to do at some point is move these over to a program class that launches a window. I just haven't figured out how to do that yet. So we we got to figure out uh, where in our code this uh, constructor for the for the main window is getting called. Okay. And it might be somewhere in app. So it might be in here. Um, so I'll, I'll have to figure that out. But for now, we're gonna we'll put it in the window and see if we can get this to work. Okay, so we're just gonna we're gonna uh, create a new triple store. So triple store my store equals new triple store. Okay, so now that we have the entry here, we want to go ahead and add it. To the triple store, so we're going to say uh, this dot my triple store so it doesn't like that hmm. for some reason I can't see the can't see the, the class we made here So for some reason it can't see triple store, even though oh my store that's why sorry it's called my store. So we're gonna say this dot my store okay, and then we're gonna say add entry current entry okay. Now now if this works, <laughs> that's a big if. If it works, uh, the entry will show up. Uh, we'll, we'll actually add the entry from the information that the user puts into the graphical user interface. We'll use that. We'll create an entry and we'll add it to the triple store. Now, the next part that we want to get to, we haven't done it yet, but after we hit the add entry button and we create the entry and add it to the triple store, we want the triple store, we want to show the, the entries to the triple store over here. Okay, and to do that, we have to bind this list view to the keys of the triple store, and I and I don't even know how to do that yet. So, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna try and figure it out. But I'm gonna monkey around with that code a little bit, and then uh, we will do that in a separate video. Thanks, guys.